welcome to My Empower Project with your host, Erin Rowe. We will discuss nutrition, fitness, becoming your own boss, and just becoming better every day. I invite you to join My Empower Project as we embark, embrace, encompass, and enlighten. Sarah Small is the empowered empath, supporting women entrepreneurs to create a thriving body, business, and life. She believes that the pathway to healing inevitably leads you to your soul's purpose. Sarah is on a mission to change the way we approach healing chronic illness. She has committed herself to helping other women who have hit healing and or business plateaus to incorporate what she believes is the most potent aspect of our growth, the emotional, energetic, and spiritual. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining my Empower Project. I'm so glad to be on today. Thank you for having me. I want to tell you before we start um, how I found you. I'll try to keep it short, but you have enlightened me with so much. I was searching on how to do a podcast launch, and yours, Healing Uncensored, was the only thing that appeared when I had Googled like how to do a podcast launch. And not only that, but your main topic at the time was regarding empaths. Mm-hmm. And I don't speak about it, but I am an intuitive empath. And I also believe in healing the body with food. And you were going into detail about autoimmune disease and how food can help that. Mm -hmm. And also one of your earlier episodes, you shared how some physical reactions can happen during a tragic situation. Yeah. That put me in disbelief because the night before my mom had passed, I was super sick. And well, actually, no, before she got diagnosed, I was super sick. And I didn't know until I heard from you that I like somehow knew something Mm -hmm. happened since then as well with close ones. So Mm -hmm. I do believe our physical body and emotional mind are intertwined with the hearts of our loved ones. Yeah. So I love following you. I want to ask you, actually, I just want to hand over the mic and learn from you. I want to (laughs) start with your recent publishing of your book, 21 Mm -hmm. Days of Healing. Tell me about that. Yeah. So thank you so much. And that's actually so fascinating to me that, that I would come up in a search like that and that that's how you randomly found me. But uh, I love it. I love it. And uh, po- launching my podcast about a year and a half ago was such a cool just journey and exploration into being able to discuss the things that I love most in this world and having had my own gosh, like 15 year journey now with chronic illness. And through that discovering that I was also an empath and just somebody who intuits her surroundings and feels deeply into the energy of people, uh, which includes emotions and physical sensations that that was also affecting my physical health. And in this journey that I talk a lot about on my podcast, I started to put together what I call a holistic healing toolbox. And really, for me, healing started with food and it started with removing gluten from my diet because I found out I had celiac disease and then removing a lot of other inflammatory foods from my diet. And for specific to autoimmune, I followed the autoimmune paleo protocol for a while, just um, really restricting a lot of foods, which didn't turn out to be the healthiest thing. But at some point, I felt like I hit a plateau and I felt like I'm doing everything, you know, air quote over here, right. I'm eating all the right foods. In fact, I'm hardly eating any variety of foods because I've restricted it so much and I'm still not feeling better. I'm still feeling inflamed and ill and fatigued and frustrated. And my anxiety for, for at least like a full year was debilitating. And that's when I started to search outside of food and food's still a very big part of my healing process. But I felt like I had to start looking outside of that to get over this plateau, this feeling like I was stuck and yet doing everything air quotes, right. And perfect. And that my inner perfectionist was so frustrated. (laughs) But, uh, in that journey, I discovered energy medicine and emotional healing. And I realized I wasn't just physically inflamed. I was emotionally inflamed. And for 
my whole life practically, I had been telling everyone and telling myself that I was fine when I wasn't really fine. Like I, I had emotions that I just don't allow myself to experience. So long story short, I allowed myself to really dive into being the student being student and just learning and, and really surrendering to that. I didn't know everything. I was already a yoga teacher for at least five years at that point. I, you know, had gone to IIN Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I was a health coach. I thought I knew a lot and turns out I, I went back into that beginner mindset and learned so much more. And that was what birthed my book, which is 21 Days of Healing. And it's based off of a live program that I also host, a live course called 21 Days of Healing. And it's really how to reduce emotional inflammation, how to heal on a soul level beyond food, and how to just discover that you are your own greatest healer by, by doing exercises every day and building 21 new tools for your healing box, healing toolbox that will allow you to see beyond kind of the surface level of what might be happening in, in any area of your life. That's wonderful. I can't wait to read it. And you and I have similar thoughts around how devoting your time daily to your emotional and spiritual side really does create change. And I'm glad that my eyes were open from a world of just going through the motions, not thinking past what's for dinner and into a life of like daily reflection, self-awareness and like a need for inner growth because it does affect you physically. Yeah. How do you, how do you explain to those like in their early personal growth journey mm -hmm. about like the sheer magnitude of positive change and focus on healing yeah. that can bring to a person? Absolutely. I, I think that for me, I'm not speaking for everyone, but for me personally, when I was only focused on food and to-do lists and what was for dinner and did I work out that day, I unconsciously was in survival mode and just trying to kind of get by. And, and I wasn't pausing. I was never freaking stopping to like listen to my body. And there was a lot of shoulding on myself. So like, I should do this. I should do that. I should go work out. I should meal prep. I should meal plan. I should, you know, think positive thoughts. I should call my friend and all these things. It's high expectations that I held myself to that. Again, there was, there was no pause to ask, do those things actually fill me up? do those things actually support my life or am I just doing them in this autonomic nervous system state, which is just, it's autopilot. It's just go, 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 go. And, uh, in that state of go, 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 I was comfortable, but I was comfortable because it was an avoidance of so many other aspects of my life. So when I, and I share this, this story often, but what allowed me to get out of the go, 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 the should, 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 and to create more of a personal development, spiritual growth practice and slow down, work on things beyond just the, my basic needs of survival. I, I was kind of thrown into a pit in order to, to find that for myself. And it was when my brother Jordan committed suicide and this came as a giant shock to my entire family. And it was, you know, obviously an insurmountable loss that we're, we're still very much grieving. But in that moment, uh, all of a sudden, all those motion, emotions and that like survival mode like came up to the surface. And it was like, okay, Sarah, you can keep living life the way that you've been living it in this fine state, or you can get down to business and like not in a hard way you need to work harder away, but instead in a nourishing way for my soul and start to pause more and listen to my body and connect to my body and talk to my body and meditate and do breath work and just be in more to in more in tune with myself. So I knew what was going on and that changed everything for me. Everything for me changed after I allowed myself to slow down, take the time for myself, write in my journal. And it might seem silly or, um, like too simple to some people, but I, I promise you that when you allow yourself to get radically honest with your emotions, 
so much can be uncovered and unearthed that is ultimately not negative or something to be perceived bad about yourself, but instead there's, there's so many lessons, learnings, and teachers underneath all of that. If you just give yourself time to, to have space for a spiritual practice and if spiritual, the word spiritual doesn't align with you, that's totally fine and call it a self growth practice or a personal development practice. Thank you for sharing about Jordan. If somebody wants to get into a routine, how would they begin? My suggestion is to like I just mentioned the pause. It's it's slowing down. If you're in your go 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 more survival mode habitual patterns, then the way to get started is to break the pattern. It's to do something differently. And that that means switching up a routine it means bringing in a new practice it means letting go of something that might feel more energetically draining or toxic for you in your life and instead bringing in new new ritual and again that can that can take a million different forms but i think the starting point is just observing, taking inventory of your life, what's serving me, what's not serving me, what is in alignment with my ultimate goals, what is not in alignment with my ultimate goals. And can I slow down enough, pause enough to just ask my body, what does it need? And so that's a great question to start with too. What do, what do I need? How often do we ask ourselves that, right? It's like, how can I help this person? What do they need from me? What does my boss need from me? Like, how can I be working harder? What about, what do, what does my soul just need today? So it doesn't have to look the same every day either. It can be an evolving, ever evolving process. But I think the first step is to slow down, pause and ask your body what it needs. I totally agree. I think daily observation or reflection, whatever word you choose to use, some people sit down and think of what they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Taking that time, people like, I don't have time. That is so important. It, it did it change my life. Yeah. And with your podcast, I love it. I really encourage everyone to listen. You talked about healing autoimmune, but mm -hmm. I also feel like you help women thrive in all components that make their soul happy and their passion. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently creating my first digital course regarding nutrition and meal prep. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear about some of the courses that you offer and more in depth about your 21 days of healing. Course. Yeah, absolutely. I, I share a lot about my journey with chronic illness and multiple autoimmune diseases, things like fibromyalgia, vitiligo, celiac disease, and a lot of underlying issues. The reason I talk about it is not because I am in a victim mentality of like, poor me, these are these, these labels. And instead, those things that were extremely challenging in my life ended up being my greatest teachers. And because I learned so much from them, and I'm sure everyone listening and yourself can relate to, it's like some of the things that have been labeled as bad in our life end up being just immensely supportive as far as lessons learned. And so I started my business with that inspiration of all the life lessons that chronic illness taught me. I ended up creating well, a ton of courses now on, on chronic illness healing, but beyond food, just because that's what resonates most with me. And I talk about like, there's, I have a chakra therapy course where you talk about how your energy centers are related to physical symptoms, very much a real thing if you haven't looked into it. Uh, I talk about, I have a course on EFT tapping, which is emotional freedom technique, and it's a way to rewire the subconscious mind by tapping a, on the energy meridian endpoints in your body. And again, I relate it more specifically to chronic illness. The first two years of my business, that's all I was talking about is just like soul level healing in relation to chronic illness, because there's also emotional roots to these diseases or physical symptoms that we experience in our life. A great example of that that so many women struggle with today is thyroid disease and or just thyroid imbalance. And as a disease, it's uh, typically uh, Hashimoto's is a, is a common autoimmune disease affecting the thyroid. And there's another called Graves disease. But when there's a thyroid imbalance, yes, on a physiological level, there's numerous thyroid hormones, TSH, T3, T4, free T3, et cetera. And there's an imbalance there that can be measured through lab testing. But what we don't measure is a human's emotions because <laughs> they really can't be measured. So we don't 
and in a doctor's office, consider how that may be impacting us on a physiological level. And what we see is there's a huge common thread and theme in women with thyroid issues, which is this tendency to be a people pleaser, to feel like your, your voice doesn't matter, to feel like it's hard for you to stick up for yourself, to feel like you just you don't know how to express yourself or it's hard to, to speak your truth. And all of a sudden when, when people, I love this moment because hopefully somebody listening <laughs> is having this moment right now where they're like, Oh my God, that's me. And I thought I just had to take medication for the rest of my life. But what if I could also address my healing from another, another angle, another angle. And it is amazing to see the transformation and the results of bringing in along with the nutrition, along with a physical level of healing, because you need a foundational like level of health in your physical body in order for your, you to heal completely. So it's, it's not to be left out at all. But uh, when you bring in the emotional and the energetic on top of that, it's so transformational. And that's something I also teach in my courses and in 21 days of healing. And I have an exercise inside of 21 Days of Healing book that helps you uncover the lesson of whatever the physical symptom is. So you look at what, what is the challenge, the physical symptom you're experiencing in your life, and you, you are the detective. And it's, it's fun to be the detective and to discover your own answers. And I believe as a coach who's worked with hundreds of clients now that one of the most empowering things that we can do as a coach is guide our clients and facilitate an experience in which they find their own answers versus just being told what to do. This is what you need to do. This is how you can fix this. And it's like, what is more transformative and life-changing for that person is when they discover their own answers and you simply facilitate that aha moment. So again, the courses go into a lot of the emotional, spiritual healing. I talk about in intuitive soul school, how to awaken your intuition. And the book really is like a, it's like the cliff notes of everything I've ever done. So it's a really good starting point at a really afford affordable price, obviously, because it's just a book versus a live course uh, for people to get started if they want to, uh, if they're interested or they want to learn more. It's wonderful that you're guiding women through this because I feel like we didn't learn about this in school. I actually had reached out and asked you where to get my crystals and I bought some from your <laughs> suggestions. Like these are things that either go over our head or we think they're not for us because there's nobody to guide us. Like if we call up one of our girlfriends, most of them are just like intuition. Like I'm trying to feed my kids right now. Like it's just not <laughs> something people prioritize. So no. The fact that you laid out this guide is just, it can help people emotionally, yeah, mm -hmm. physiologically. And it's just one exercise a day, which, yeah. yeah, there's a million excuses we can make on why we don't have time, we don't have energy, et cetera. But the reality that the deepest truth is we all have five minutes. If we want to make and prioritize five minutes, we can always make five minutes in our day for just little tools to just like easily start to, start to prioritize this. And you mentioned intuition specifically. And to me, when we slow down and pause enough in order to listen to our inner self or our higher self or the, the little rumbles within us, uh, Rebecca Campbell writes, uh, trust the niggle, trust the niggle inside of you. <laughs> to me, it's like the little like rumble in your belly, the gut instinct, the inner knowing that oftentimes we write off and we're like, oh, that must not be right. Who am I to think that like I, I ha I'm an intuitive or that I feel on a deeper level. But the truth is you do and we all do and we all have this capability within us. We all have this possibility to awaken our intuition and to, to feel that little rumble in your belly and for it to guide you in your life and for it to help you make choices and, and take you along the most aligned path if we allow ourselves to, to listen to it and to pause long enough and to develop a spiritual practice or an intuitive practice that lets us listen beyond just our ears. So of course, like people listening to this podcast can listen with their ears. I'm, you know, they're hearing you and me right now, but there's other types of listening. You can listen with your eyes. You can listen with your heart. 
You can listen with your emotions, with your what's called clairsentience. That is the empath. It's clear feeling. Uh, you can listen with, with your mind. That's, that's a clear cognizance, clear, clear knowing. So we have all these clear senses or clear senses that uh, we're not taught in school. Like you mentioned, like we are not taught this stuff in school. So of course it might sound new or crazy because it is just unfamiliar. It is just new. But if you take the time to, to, just experiment with this. Everyone has a different relationship to their intuition, but I highly recommend if you're new to this to experiment with an intuitive practice because it can completely transform your life. And there's so many answers that, that become available to you through your intuition that uh, were not previously, didn't, didn't seem previously available. I love your teachings and I really... I really also encourage women listening to build a business in something they have a passion about optimizing their well-being, and just to have the confidence and energy to build that business is tough because fear holds us back. So <laughs> what piece of advice do you have to encourage women to branch out, take that chance mm -hmm. and create a business? <sighs> That's such a good question. And I can so put myself back in that, in my own shoes three, four years ago where I was working a full-time nonprofit job as a international chief of staff for a food and agriculture organization. And my schedule, I was overworked, underpaid, unfulfilled. My heart was passionate about sustainable food and agriculture, but not about the position that I was playing in the company or the organization. And so then there was this little niggle that was like nudging, 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 being like, ah, oh, Sarah, you've learned so much through grief and loss and, and challenges and specifically autoimmune and chronic illness in your life. You should do something with that. <laughs> like walk closer, go in. Of course, fear was like, mayday, mayday. Who are you to do that? You don't know enough. You're not an expert. You don't, you're not like a authority or you're not a published author. Like no one's, you know, whatever the freaking self-talk is in your head. Everyone had, we all had it at some point in relation to some area of our life. And it very much came out for me in the starting beginning and start of my business. What eventually happened was, again, I was very inspired by the death of my brother, because even though that was at the time, the greatest loss I'd ever experienced in my life, and it's still one of the greatest losses I've experienced in my life. It also inspired me to realize how quickly life can be taken away from you and how we're, the truth is that there is, there's life and death. We're all freaking going to die someday. I know we don't like to think about it, but it's going to happen someday. And we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. And that lit a fire underneath my ass to be like, wow, what am I doing with my life? And then there was still limiting beliefs and, and it's a continuous journey that I'm still going through with limiting beliefs. But I realized that if I didn't start now, that all I was doing was setting myself behind of where I could be in three years. If I wait another year, another year, another year of how much I could have shared or how much I could have poured my heart into something that I truly care about and am passionate about. So in tarot, uh, readings, we, there's a card called the fool. And I love this card because fool, when we think of the fool, it's like the foolish, stupid person, but it's the opposite in tarot. The fool is often depicted by a baby little chick, uh, stepping out of the nest and off of a little, you know, flimsy branch. And, you know, one foot is about to leap and, and try to fly for the first time. And you take this leap of faith and you that little bird jumps before the net appears. And so it might seem foolish to the outside world on what you're doing, but actually you're trusting. It is a, a, a action, a, a leaning into trust in your life and trusting that you will be supported, trusting that, that you have a message to share. And even if your message is very similar to other people who are speaking out, somebody on this planet needs to hear it from you. I guarantee you that. I, my message is not super, super unique compared to others that are in the field, but somebody needs to hear it from me and the way I have to teach it compared to the way somebody Susie down the street has to, has the way that she teaches it. They're going to get something different from me. There's not 
too many people in the field and the best thing you can do is start now. Do it anyways. Just freaking go because you're not going to regret having started. And any failure is simply feedback. You're going to learn so much about yourself along the way. That actually touches me personally because while I'm creating this meal prep course, I have all these limiting beliefs and then I'm like, I'm just afraid to put it out there. But like you said, I have knowledge to share, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. go and do it. <laughs> and like your there's probably a thousand people who do meal prep, but the way you do it is different. It is unique. It is going to touch somebody in a way that like all of a sudden it makes sense or it's exactly what they needed or the, the recipes or the ideas around it are different from what they've heard or that they've been presented before. That's going to be potentially life-changing for somebody. And that's the other thing about taking the leap of faith and going for it and starting your business or doing something you're passionate about is that, you know, we, we never know who needs the message until we start sharing it. And it's truly a disservice to the world to not share your value, your wisdom, your, the, all the knowledge that you do have from probably, well, I think we all probably bring life experience, which has immense value in itself, as well as anything you've learned in your own education, you blend that together. There's so much for you to be sharing with the world. Yeah. I think that everybody has something to share, whether it's just how to make a DIY project or something on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I want to ask you something a little off topic. Can you tell me about your Airstream? Cause I've seen pictures <laughs> on your Instagram and I yeah. love it. Of course. So yeah, my husband and I live uh, outside of Boulder in Colorado and we have, we have a house, but we just recently brought, bought a second property up in the mountains in Grand Lake, Colorado. And we just fell in love with this area. There's three giant lakes and we missed the, the abundance of lakes from the Midwest. So we were really called to be able to spend more time up in the mountains. So of course we're like, okay, well let's just like see if we can afford this. What is the price range and what does it cost to live on a lake up in the mountains in the, in the Rocky mountains, right outside of Rocky national, Rocky mountain national park. And so we're searching and searching and our realtor is like, I think you got, you're like a young couple. I feel like you'd be a good fit for this home. And we look at it and we look at the picture, there's one picture and we're like, what is that? <laughs> like, what actually is that? And so we, it was very hard to like decipher. I'm a visual person. I'm like, I, I don't understand. We need to go look at it. So we get there to the property and we realize it's, it's an Airstream and it's an Airstream essentially with a living room, like built onto it. So it's not a mobile Airstream anymore. I guess technically we might be able to unearth it. It might ride again, but for now it's definitely static. It's definitely in its, it's in its spot. Uh, but we fell in love with it. It was so unique and so different and it had character. So we bought it and <laughs> it has been a, a project for us. A lot of fixing up the previous owners were in their like late eighties and had lived there for 50 years. So you can imagine the amount of stuff. Um, and even stuff that was left behind. So we, we've been fixing it up and this is beautiful timing the day we're recording this because this weekend uh, we officially, officially opened it up as a second business on Airbnb. So our first, our first official renters check in this Saturday and <laughs> we're really excited slash nervous because we just, you know, it's, we love it, but it's a very unique property that has been fun for us, but we're like, is everyone going to love it? We, we don't know. Well, congratulations. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's, it's, um, it's a beautiful place to escape to, especially as an entrepreneur. It's like sometimes being at home and working from here all day, I'm like, okay, I gotta switch. I gotta switch up the scenery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I love watching how much you've evolved and there's so much about healing in general, using inner work, which we should each devote time to daily. So I'm grateful for your time with us. Where can we find you online? Of course. And, and thank you so much for, for inviting me on today. I hang out a lot on Instagram, especially Instagram stories. I'm over at, at the underscore empowered underscore empath and just sharing lots of little nuggets of wisdom as well as parts of my own journey and personal life just to connect and get to know all of you. I also have my own podcast called Healing Uncensored, which 
apparently you can find if you search how to have a podcast launch party <laughs> that I was like, I remember it was so much fun and, um, so nerve wracking. Cause you're like, Oh my God, I'm doing this and I'm putting myself out into the world. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so healing uncensored is my podcast and then you guys can, my, my domain's being updated, but it'll be re redirected regardless. Uh, it's autoimmunetribe.com and that's where I share a lot of other information and ways to work with me. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, and congratulations. Your wedding was beautiful. Oh, I saw thank those you so photos. much. Uh, thank you so much. I was just going to say, uh, I appreciate your love on the wedding photos. It was such a special day, and uh, it snowed out here in Colorado the day before, so it had you know, a little extra character in our, in our photos, but it was still such a, such a blast and so much fun, and uh, thank you again for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening. You can find every episode, including the written versions to read on AaronRowe.com. Be sure to leave a review because I love hearing your opinions on the topics I shared. Are they new? Are they helpful for you? Tap that subscribe button so you don't miss the future interviews and enlightenment to come. This episode was brought to you by me and only me because I love sharing new ideas with you. Take action to become better. Have a fabulous day. Oh, my God.